Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Persona. Studio One version 5.5 is here, and it's one of my favorite releases to date. Why? Because we showed a lot of love to the project page. If you're not familiar, the project page is our mastering suite inside of Studio One Professional. In this video, I'm going to go over seven new features, seven that we've added just to the project page alone. You can read the full release notes to find out all the other goodies that we've added to Studio One with version 5.5. Everything I'm going to show you in this video has to do with the project page, which is exclusive to Studio One Professional. So if you are a Studio One artist or Prime user, you won't have access to this, but perhaps you'll see something you like, and maybe it's a good time to upgrade to Studio One Professional or to become a Personas Sphere member, which gets you access to Studio One Professional plus a bunch of extra goodies as well. All right, let's dive in to these cool new features. Up first, track automation. This is by far the number one requested feature in the project page in Studio One. We now have access to all the automation tools from the song page in the project page. No more exporting to a song page to automate a certain section and then bringing it back into the project page. We can do all of that within the project page now. The way we access that is by simply pressing A on the keyboard and that will show us our automation lanes. This should look familiar to you if you've used this in the song page with a couple of key differences. This top row is the automation lane for all of our individual songs. As you can see, it highlights which one we're working on so we don't get confused. The bottom row here is for any plugins on our master. So I've got a limiter here on my main output. As I adjust the gain of that limiter, we can see that parameter changing down here. And then I've got an EQ on this first song, and as I adjust that parameter, we can see it changing down here. Now the way to add these parameters to our automation lane, exactly the same as we do inside the song page, I just right click on this up and down boost parameter, choose edit automation lane and it adds it right here. If I want to make another one for the low frequency gain, click edit automation, now I've got that here. Now once we have the edit automation lane created, we can use all our normal automation tools, we can create points, we can create curves, we can even get in there with tools like our transform tool and select whole sections and do some pretty crazy stuff with that. If you've never messed around with the transform tool, it's pretty cool when it comes to automation. But you can do all of that inside of Studio One. What I would imagine though for you for a mastering session, your automation moves are probably gonna look a lot like tiny little adjustments right here coming out of a chorus, right? Maybe we'll just do something like this, right? Just a little bit of a bump there. And obviously we can zoom in and make that as precise as we need to make it. Uh, but having this available to you is pretty great. A couple of ways I see using this, EQ automation in certain spots that just, I can't get in there and EQ that one section to get that guitar fuller, even though it really needs to be. I can now EQ a little bit of 360 up just in that section and then have it go away. A more common example of something to do in a, in a mastering scenario is maybe automating the input gain of a limiter or the ceiling of a limiter for certain sections of the song. So maybe it's hitting the limiter a little too hard here, but it's not quite loud enough here. Now we have options to adjust the parameter of the limiter for different sections of the song. A lot of powerful options here. I'm so excited to play around with this more. Up next, clip gain envelopes. Speaking of volume, maybe you just want to adjust the actual file itself without having to revert to any type of automation. Well, with version 5 of Studio One, we introduced clip gain envelopes in the song page. Well, guess what? They're here in the project page now as well. If I right-click on this song and check the box next to gain envelope, we now see this cute little horizontal line up here. Now it looks a lot like automation, but what you'll find is it's actually moving the underlying audio itself. And this is all happening before it hits any of the plugins. So if we have a certain section that just really needs to be boosted, we can do that and actually boost the raw audio itself. It's kind of a destructive edit where we can come in and say, you know what, this section, let's select this section right here and let's just bring that whole piece up. Now we can do that and we can adjust that to our heart's content, get those levels perfectly like we want them, then apply our processing, our EQs, compressors, multiband, limiters, and all that. Number three, target loudness for digital release. Did you know that if you master your music too loudly, that the streaming services will actually turn it down to a specified level? Well, we've created a tool to help you be more in control of that process rather than relying on the streaming services. Here's how it works. If you go to digital release within the project page, you'll notice a new section here on the right called loudness. This is our target loudness feature. And we can choose from a number of options here, including several of the popular streaming services. So if I want to post this on Spotify, Spotify is looking for a negative 14 luffs average loudness for the song. Apple Music, however, is looking for negative 16. 
So if you want to know where your music hits on this scale and make sure that if maybe you got a little happy with the limiter and things are a little too loud, that it gets adjusted properly to match the streaming service, we now give you that option here with the target loudness feature. Number four, multiple format export for digital release. Speaking of digital release, we've added this to the song page and you see a theme here. It's now part of project page as well. When I finish my master, if I want to export WAV files, AIFF files, and MP3 files, files and even Og Vorbis files, I can just select those boxes here, choose exactly the parameters I want for each, and then I can go to lunch. And Studio One will begin the export process for each type of file for me without me having to sit here and keep telling it, okay, now do MP3. Okay, now do Wave. Okay, now do Opus. It'll do them all for me and I can just go eat a sandwich. Number five, track transform. Here's a small but powerful feature. If you right click on a song in the project page, you now have the option to transform that song to rendered audio. In other words, it'll render down all the effects on that song. This allows you to offload plugin processing, but the really cool thing this allows you to do is render down any outboard effects that you're using. Let's say you use the pipeline plugin to send your master out to a really sweet analog compressor and bring it back in. Once you've got it dialed in for song number one, you can use this feature, right click on it, choose transform to rendered audio. It's gonna bounce it down real time through your processing and then render that as an audio file. The plugins will disappear and now you'll be free to use that compressor on the next song. So we render it down for song one, then we can dial in all the appropriate settings for song two and do the same process. If at any point you get stuck or you want to go back and make changes, it's no problem. Just right click and have it rendered, transformed back to real time audio and you can make all the adjustments you want. By the way, if you're using an analog compressor like this, be sure to take some photos of the settings if you're going to use different settings per song. And extra cool, you can actually save those pictures here inside the pipeline plugin. Number six, the Listen Bus. You may have seen this already, but the Listen Bus is now a part of the project page. Listen Bus is a separate set of outputs that you can use for really any number of things. One of the most common is to have this assigned to a different set of outputs on your interface. Let's say outputs three and four, and maybe those are the ones that you listen to on your headphones or speakers. And you can insert a plugin here like a room correction plugin or a headphone simulator plugin, something that will emulate or correct for the anomalies in your room or create different sorts of sounds for your headphones to give you different mixing environments, stuff that can be really great and really helpful, but you don't really need that to be applied to the actual audio, right? Have you ever done that dance where you do a mix and it sounds amazing and you bounce it down, take it to the car and you remember, I forgot to turn off the room correction and now my mix sounds terrible everywhere else. Well, you don't have to worry about that now with the listen bus. I can put all my room correction, headphone emulation, anything I want on this bus and then whatever gets rendered comes out from the master bus. So the master bus essentially feeds into the listen bus and the listen bus, I can apply any kind of processing. It'll only be applied to what I hear, but it won't be applied to the final rendered master when I do things like digital release export. And number seven, a new high-end dithering algorithm. File this one into the nerdy category, but dither is a type of noise that you apply to the signal when converting it from a higher bit rate to a lower bit rate. So from a 24 bit master down to a 16 bit file for CD replication, or from a 24-bit master down to a smaller MP3 file. This noise helps with, it's just there's a bunch of technical stuff that happens. But we've improved the dither, which in the end just means better sounding conversion down to smaller formats. I'll read it to you in case you really want to know. This is, for the tech addicts, the new algorithm is a high tri-pass tri-dither with ninth order psychoacoustic noise shaping F-weighted. Boom. Okay, hopefully you can see we've put a lot of work into this update. We really are committed to making Studio One better. And a lot of the ideas that we get for changes and improvements come from you. So thank you for your feedback. Thanks for being a Studio One user. Go download the update and check out all these new features. It's really fun. Like I said, this is one of my favorite updates to date. And I've been using Studio One since version two. So that says a lot. If you want to find out more about Studio One or our Sphere membership, which gets you Studio One Professional, Notion or Notation software, plus a bunch, and I mean a bunch of add-ons included for like 14 bucks and change a month. Head over to personas.com and check it all out. Thanks for watching. See ya.